Today we're going to be talking about Mother's Day, but also it's our Flower Communion Day. You might have noticed we have fresh flowers here. And I put the two together because the original Mother's Day had flowers, started with flowers. So I want to give you a little history. Anne Jarvis was a woman who made mothers groups, brought together groups of mothers during the Civil War. And she brought together groups of mothers from the Union side and also the Confederate side together to help families who had wounded soldiers, to support families whose soldiers' sons had died, and also to advocate for peace. Now, she tried to make peace happen by bringing mothers from the Union, mothers from the Confederate together every year for a Mother's Friendship Day. She was an activist, a social activist. She was also a community organizer. She wanted mothers to become political, which is really quite amazing in the 1860s. She was ahead of her time. And then on May 1st, 1864, she gave birth to a daughter, Anna. So Anne and Anna were very close. So when the mother Anne died on May 8th, 1905, the daughter, Anna, was devastated. She spent many hours reading over the letters of condolences that she had been given, underlining all the kind words people said about her mother. She grieved for a year, and the next year she gathered together some friends and said, next year I'm going to have a memorial service for my mother. Will you come? And they said yes, they would indeed come. So a year later, 1907, she did have a memorial service for her mom. And there she gave out white carnations to all the people that attended because that was her mom's favorite flower. The next year, she decided to do it on a grander scale. She put together two Mother's Day services, one at the small little West Virginia church that her mother had been a Sunday school teacher for 26 years and another at her own church in Philadelphia where 15,000 people came to honor and celebrate their moms. There were white carnations given out by the thousand to people. Then Anna got very committed to making Mother's Day a national holiday. In 1910, she went before Congress and she made the proposal. And guess what? They laughed. They said, oh, all men in Congress at that time. Are you re- kidding? This is ridiculous. Of course, we don't need anything like that. But she was determined. So she started gathering support for herself. Politicians, very wealthy people. She got the Heinz family on board, you know the ketchup, Heinz ketchup family, very wealthy, backing her up. And then she got the floral industry behind her. She took donations from all these people, took donations from the floral industry, and she spoke at all their conventions, on and on, passing the word at how important it would be for us to have a day to honor our mothers. Finally, in 1914, President Woodrow Wilson signed a law that the second Sunday in May would be a national holiday, Mother's Day. Now, in the meantime, years are going by where they're celebrating Mother's Day, and white carnations are in big demand. And what started to happen is people started hoarding them and then scalping them the day before. They sold them for outrageous prices. Well, the floral industry came back with a plan. They would start selling white carnations for mothers who were deceased and bright red carnations for mothers who were still alive. They could double their profit. About this time, Anna noticed that the holidays seemed to be getting out of control. And she thought, 
they are commercializing this. And she was outraged. It became about buying flowers and cards and presents for mother. And she said, no, that you're missing the point. For Anna Jarvis, her perfect way to observe Mother's Day would be for each one of you to go home. Home to where Mama is, dead or alive, and spend the day with her. And talk with her, and laugh with her, and tell her that you love her, and tell her thank you for bringing you into this world. She believed that the purpose of the holiday was sentiment and connection, not profit. Hallmark, however, had another idea. They had those eyes on profit. And they still do today. Over 133 million Mother's Day cards were sold last year. Then the National Retail Federation, has, they predict every year how much we're going to spend on mom. And this year, it's $163, which adds up to $19.9 billion of retail for today, not including taking mom to dinner. The Restaurant Association tells us that Mother's Day is the most popular day to go out to eat, adding another $4.1 billion to the day. So I think... It has been commercialized. What about you? And I wonder, in this commercialization, have we lost our compass? Have we lost our way? Anna Jarvis thought so. She spent the rest of her life fighting to get rid of Mother's Day. To have Congress rescind the law. She campaigned and campaigned and campaigned and boycotted and she lost. Commercialism won. And it's still going strong, you might have noticed. And it has morphed a bit. On Mother's Day 2013, the Reverend Alice McKenzie read this card sentiment to her congregation. M is for the millions of things she gave me. O means she's only growing old. T is for the tears that she shed to save me. H is for her heart of purest gold. E is for her eyes with love light shining. And R is for right and right she will always be. Put them together and they spell mother, a word that means so much to me. Now, I am quite sure if my children were here, that's what they would say about me. <laughs> that's exactly how we feel about our mother, right? Wouldn't you say that about your mother, right? Right, she will always be the purest heart of gold. No? Why not? Because I'll tell you, that person doesn't exist. That perfect mother image that Hallmark brings us doesn't really exist. Finally, Reverend Mackenzie's mom told her to stop sending her those flowered, colored, uh, covered cards with all that fake flattery inside. And Alice said, why? And this is what her mom said, oh, come on, Alice, get real. I did the best I could, but I was far from a perfect mom. You remember, don't you? You were there. And I think that's kind of what we have lost track of, being real. Commercialism has almost taken mothers and made them into caricatures of perfect, pure, singing angels. What Anna Jarvis was fighting for was something deeper than that. She was fighting for real connection with real people. 
She was fighting with a heart connection between me and you, between my mother and me, and your mother and you, and your children and you. She was fighting for a real relationship, not a fantasy relationship, not someone with perfect people. No, she wanted real relationships with real people. Not the, oh, mom, you were such a perfect role model, and you, you kept a perfect house, and you always sacrificed for us. You only spoke kindly. This is your mother, right? She never raised her voice. She worked night and day for us, constantly never having a hair out of place. No. Those people don't really exist. I want to tell you about an example of a real mom. We measure ourselves about the hall, against the hallmark mom and say, oh, we're failing somehow. But we're not. I want to tell you the story of a real mom. She is the mom of the gardener quads. I don't know if you know her, but she's a mom gardener. And she has four, four two-year-olds. Two sets of twins. She has summed up motherhood in a 34-second video on YouTube. Unfortunately, I can't show you the video, but I do want you to know we are working on getting a video system here at the fellowship. So I am just going to tell you her words, okay? She's videoing herself, and she says... Dad is out shoveling the driveway, and Mom is desperately in need of a treat to make it through the rest of the evening. (laughs) And so I'm in the pantry, because they never go away. They never, ever go away. Is that wrong? And they want everything that you have. They want everything. She takes the video, looks down at the crack underneath, and she sees two little babies looking in that say, Hi. You see, they never go away. Never. That is a more accurate picture of motherhood than what Hallmark leads us to believe. Because here's the truth. None of us are perfect as parents. Our mothers weren't perfect as parents either. Some of us got really good parenting. Some of us got really crummy parenting. Most of us got a blend of both. So even though we're not perfect as parents and our parents weren't perfect as mothers, we still loved them and they still loved us in their own way. So today... I ask you, why not tell them? Why not show up and have a real relationship, Gary, with your daughter? So beautiful to have a real connection. Since I've seen you last, my husband and I went to Budapest and also to Prague. So here are some fun facts that I did not know. But Budapest is two cities, Buda and Pest. And in the middle is the River Danube. Just like Fort Worth, Dallas, Fort Worth, it's Budapest. Also, Czechoslovakia doesn't exist anymore. I don't know if you know that. There's the Czech Republic, and right next door, connected, is Slovakia. But they have broken up. They are no longer together. But our trip was remarkable nonetheless. Both Hungary and the Republic of Czech are full of history. Of course, we're confronted with the after effects of the Holocaust and also the communist regime that came in and took over the Eastern Bloc. But they're also full of music. There are concerts every day that you can go to. There's an opera anytime if you want to go. There's one happening in the city. And they're also full of great art museums that have a lot of the great masters, Rodin, Da Vinci, Rembrandt, uh, Monet, Renoir, you, know, you name them, they have them. 
And then there's fantastic food and hearty beers and castles and, and there's even a gingerbread museum that has a full-size gingerbread house for children to go into. We had a great time. But what impressed me the most, really deep down in, was community. Connection. You could see it and you could feel it. And I think this is what Anna Jarvis was talking about. Real relationships with people. Authentic, I have time for you relationships with people. Deep level connection. Now I don't know why, but my husband and I had good luck finding places to eat. We would go on a site or, or go to a concert, and then we'd just look for a restaurant to eat in. And we found the best restaurants. The first night, we were seated next to a table that had three twenty-somethings at it. On this side, there were about twenty thirty-somethings over here. There were families. There were middle-aged people. There were groups of twenties and thirties together, talking, laughing singing with the band, fully present, and no cell phones. None. No cell phones. These people were just talking eye to eye, talking to each other, laughing with each other, real friendships, a whole bunch of them. I didn't say anything the first night, but then it happened again the second night. Everywhere we went, there were 20-somethings and 30-somethings that were not check. Oh, excuse me, I have a text. <laughs> they were not doing that to people. They didn't even bring their phones out if they had them. They were just connecting, and it was beautiful. I think that we have lost our way a little bit with technology. We in the United States are more connected now than we have ever been in all of time, technologically. But we're more disconnected than we've ever been spiritually and with each other. It wasn't like that in the Eastern Bloc. Now maybe it was because they had suffered through two world wars. They had suffered through the loss of millions of their citizens and the Holocaust, and then the communist regime that came and took over. And all that was left for them was a longing for roots and connection. And you know what? I have that longing too. Do you? Have that longing for roots and connection. Having real friendships, real love. In fact, for Mother's Day this year, I'm going to ask my family to leave their cell phones someplace different than the dinner table. To not pick them up at all. And I think this will be a challenge for them. I think it will be hard for them. I have two 20-somethings. To not look up a word or not look up a fact or not look up a, you know, a, a tweet or a text or an email or a phone call. I think it will be hard for them but I'm going to play the Mother's Day card and see if I can get that to happen. What if we all do that? What if we all put up our phones and start to talk to each other, eyeball to eyeball, to really be present with each other when we're talking? I think today, if you do that and you talk to different people, you will find that the M does not really stand for all the millions of things my mother gave me. It stands for mixed feelings. Mother's Day is full of mixed feelings for people. Some good, some bad. And some people, if you talk to them, you may find out, like Julie and our own congregation, who just lost her mother on Friday afternoon, that they're grieving a loss. You may find that you run into a person who cries every month because she can't get pregnant. I had infertility for six years. I know what it like, it's like to live in hell. So if you're going through that yourself, 
feel free to talk to me because I'm available. We also might find people that haven't seen their mothers in years and really don't want to. I have a client right now in Seoul, Korea, and she's teaching English there. And I said, what are you doing in Seoul? And she said, well, my mother's in New York. I got as far away from her as possible. And then you might meet some people that don't have children by choice. They don't want to have children. It cramps their style. And they're sick of people pressuring them into having a child. So we'll also meet people and find out if we really talk to our friends that we regret some of the decisions we made in our own mothering. And they regret it too. And we all want a second chance with our kids to do it again. Anybody else want that besides me? To correct all the mistakes that we made. And of course today, if we really connect, we'll also find people that have a great deep love for their mother because they were raised by wonderful mothers. Not perfect, but good enough. You who raise children... Let me tell you, I know you weren't perfect, and I wasn't either. But you did a good enough job. It's time to let go of any guilt that you're carrying around for mothering, because you did a good enough job. So, if I were to give you a Mother's Day present, it would be this. What you did is enough. Who you are is enough. To connect and have real relationships, real friendships, connect from the heart, we can still love each other and we can still celebrate this amazing journey called life. So let's do that. Let's connect right now, love each other, celebrate life, and enjoy the journey by doing the Flower Communion. The Flower Communion started in 1923. It was started in Czechoslovakia when they were still married. And uh, it was started by a Unitarian minister, Reverend Norbert Chaupek. And in the first celebration of the flowers, he brought people together and asked them to bring a flower from their own garden And then he blessed the flowers, said a prayer over the flowers, and asked people to come up and take another flower, not one that they brought, to take home with them. The flower communion is about the universality of the beauty of nature that's available for everyone. Flowers are actually all over the planet, in Muslim countries, in Hindu countries, in Christian countries, in the Jewish country of Israel, and in all the other countries where there are 4,000 other faiths on the planet, there are flowers. So we have a communion here today, communing together in community, not just with each other but with all of our brothers and sisters around the world and all of the mothers and fathers around the world. So we are going to replicate Dr. Chapek's blessing and flower communion. So I'm going to ask you to, when it's time to come forward and pick a flower that really speaks to you, come up silently, reverently, and look for the flower that's yours. If you didn't bring a flower, it's okay. I still want you to take a flower because some angels here, flower angels, brought extra flowers. And then go back to your seat quietly and spend some time with your flower, just looking at it and the miracle of life that it represents. So let's begin with this. Y'all standing, and I will read Dr. Chapek's actual blessing of the flowers. Infinite spirit of life, 
We ask thy blessings on these flowers, thy messengers of fellowship and love. May they remind us, amid diversity of knowledge and of gifts, to be one in desire and affection with each other, and devotion to thy holy will. May they also remind us of the value of comradeship, of doing and sharing a life. May we cherish friendship as one of the most precious gifts that there is. May we not let awareness of another's talents discourage us or sully our relationship, but may we realize that whatever we can do, great or small, the efforts of all of us, the efforts of all of us are needed to heal the world. Thank you. You may be seated. I'm going to read Dr. Chopek's prayer now and then have you come up to get your flowers. In the name of Providence, which implants in the seed the future of the tree and in the hearts of men and women the longing for people living in brotherly love. In the name of the highest, in whom we move and who makes the mother and the father, the brother and the sister what they are. In the name of the sages and the great religious leaders who sacrificed their lives to hasten the coming of peace and justice for all. Let us renew our resolution sincerely to be real brothers, real sisters, have real connections, regardless of any kind of bar which estranges us one from another. In this holy resolution, may we be strengthened, knowing that we are God's family, that we are one spirit, that we are the spirit of love which unites us, and may we endeavor for a more perfect and a more joyful life. Blessed be and amen. And now if you'll come up one at a time, row at a time, and pick your flower, please.
Aren't they amazing? When you really look at a flower, it's incredible. May the connection you feel right now to the earth, to the beauty of the earth, and to each other, and to all humanity, remain intact this week. May you not get sucked in to the commercialism and the technology this week, but build real relationships with real people. Blessed be, and amen. This week, come walk with me. Come walk with each other. And today, make sure and take a moment to say thank you to your mom, whether she's alive or has already left the planet, to say thank you for bringing me here. Thank you for this journey that we have together. Blessed be and amen.